Okay, where are my tired resetters? I know that we talk so much on this channel about weight loss and overall strategies for improving your hormonal health for both men and women, but I wanna make sure that on this video, I'm really addressing those of you that are feeling exhausted. And I can tell you, if you don't know my own personal story with exhaustion, um, I actually tell it in both books. I, I tell it in The Menopause Reset and in Fast Like a Girl, that at, in my early 20s, I had chronic fatigue syndrome. I was actually diagnosed with officially being having a syndrome of chronic fatigue. And so I've played with a lot of the things I'm gonna tell you. And I promise you now, I have insane amounts of energy because of the principles I'm about to share with you. So sit tight as I walk you through this, because I get like energy, losing energy is sucks. It's not fun. It's hard to move through your day. So let's, let's dive in to these actually five things that I have here for you. Let's start with the first one. Okay, the first one is we've got to get your circadian rhythm back on track. Remember that when it's dark out, we're supposed to power down. And when it's light, we're supposed to power up. So if you are going to bed at midnight and getting, to, getting up at eight in the morning, you are actually working against what the natural circadian rhythm is supposed to be for your body. Go back and think about how the cave people did it. They didn't have light. So they went into the cave. They, they started to slow down when it was dark and then they did all their activity when it was light. So let's get you back into the pattern of light. Get off the blue light at night Make sure that you're off of any stressful behaviors. We'll talk about this at night. Stop eating dinner at late, late at night. Um, and cortisol, as you'll learn here in a second, is a big piece of your energy levels. And cortisol wants you to use her in the morning. She's the highest in the morning. So switch some of your exercise to morning. For some of you, exercising later in the day is going to make it harder for you to fall asleep. So go back into circadian rhythm. I map out a whole strategy for circadian rhythm in the menopause reset. That's the first one. Okay, the second one. Think about this for a moment. This is your bedtime meal. Here's, here's the challenge. I want you to dive into your body for a moment. If you eat your dinner at eight o'clock at night and then you try to go to bed at 10, your, job, your body has another job to do. It's, it's trying to digest that food. So it's not going to put you into the state you need to be in to sleep. I can, say, I can tell you on all my bio wear, biometric wearables, I can always see that I sleep the best when I eat my dinner earlier. So just try moving your dinner up and see if that gives you a deeper sleep, more REM sleep, a higher quality sleep, so you wake up feeling more rested. Um, the other thing I would tell you, this is a really interesting thought, that I want, I want you to think through. And this was something I had studied years ago, which was the zone diet. There's so much benefit in a lot of the diets out there. We tend to like throw one diet away and then we come to a new diet, but there's actually some benefit in honoring some diets that have worked for us for so many years. And the zone diet was one of them because what they, Barry Sears did in that was he made sure that we were able to stabilize our blood sugar in his, in his book. So this is what the zone diet was. If you're looking at your plate, you have to make sure that you have a, like a, the amounts, that this is not calories, this is the amount of protein should be about a fistful. The amount of carbohydrate should be about a fistful. fistful. So you wanna have equal amounts of carbs with protein. And then you want to make sure that you have a half of a fistful of fat. Fat's gonna slow down the glucose spike, Protein's gonna give you aminos that you need to let the brain rest and is gonna also slow down the protein spike, but then carbs are there to support serotonin production and give you a little bit, we want a little bit of a glucose spike so you so as it starts to come down, you feel a little, a, a little bit sleepier and you can go into a more rested state. So I find for dinner, that's one of my best formulas is going back to the zone diet and really using that as a tool. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called A Beginner's Guide to a Fasting Lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. Okay, my third tip. And this is protecting the two hours before you go to bed. You can't go from do, 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 and then go to sleep and expect your brain to be rested. 
what will happen is your brain's still running a show as you're sleeping. It's going through the day. It's, it's trying to simulate all of that. And so it's not putting you into a deep enough rest. So when you wake up in the morning, you're feeling exhausted. So the, one of the ways you know of how deep of your asleep that your body's getting into is through something like an aura ring. And the aura ring will tell you how much deep sleep you get and how much REM sleep you get. REM is where your, your, the neurons in your brain can relax and they can process the information from the day. But if you're working right up until bedtime, you're going to find that you will often get less REM sleep because your brain is still actively working even though you're asleep. So really look at those two hours. The other trick that I do is uh, two hours before I go to bed is no blue light. Put on some blue blockers. Be careful about stressful conversations. I spend about two hours as the sun's going down telling myself, hey, we're going to start to go to bed now. Let's wind ourselves down so that I know once I hit that pillow, I go asleep, I get my deep sleep and my REM sleep, and I wake up feeling energized. Okay, number four, this is a big one, is protecting the first hour when you wake up. So think about this for a moment. So many of you are working right up until night. Maybe you decide, well, I'm gonna shut off work and I'll watch like a series on TV. You're still not resting in that. And then you go to sleep and then you get up and the first thing you do is grab your phone and check your email. And you are in your brain and your nervous system is in a constant state of sympathetic go. You're not going to wake up feeling rested. You're, you're going to wake up with your body going, oh shit, here we go again. Here we go again. We're going to, and, and that becomes draining. So protect that time period before you go to, to bed nurture your thoughts, and then the morning time. I have learned now that is my miracle morning. I did a whole interview on the Resetter podcast with Hal Elrod, Elrod that a lot of you love. You can go listen to that. But I wake up slow, and I don't do coffee first thing. I wake up, I meditate, I do breath work. I happen to have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. I do that. I, I set intentions. I spent tw 20 minutes every morning just thinking of what I'm grateful for. Uh, I visualize how I want my day to go, but that is my time so that I can slowly emerge into my day. Then I grab my cup of coffee, and once I have my cup of coffee, now I'm bringing cortisol up in accordance with how cortisol is supposed to come in for you. You're not supposed to get a cortisol spike the minute you wake up in the morning. And then the last thing, and this is a real key one, number five, is throughout the day, there's a couple of things you need to keep your energy up for the next day. Not necessarily energy in that day. Well, there are a few, I'll tell you about that. But how do you always live today knowing that the, the health habits you do today are going to affect tomorrow's energy levels? So think about that. So whenever I get stressed, I move. I, I, I go for a walk. I walk sometimes 10 times a day. If I'm at my desk, something stresses me, I don't sit there. I get up and I move and I use that cortisol. So that, that's a biggie. The second thing I do is I make sure I get out and I see the midday light because we have serotonin receptor sites in our eyes and I want little doses of serotonin throughout the day. So I'll let those receptor sites get nourished with light so that my body knows where it is in my circadian rhythm and it's keeping itself in a, in a good pace. When I, when I open up my eating window, I'm always working to stabilize my blood sugar. So every few months, I put on a continuous glucose monitor so I can understand how my, gluc my blood sugar is doing and do I need to pair and put my macros together differently. So throughout the day, what you do in a day really matters, not only for your energy that day, but the energy tomorrow. So those are my favorite hacks. Beyond that, you know, we do have issues like, for me, chronic fatigue was Epstein-Barr virus. It was high loads of Epstein-Barr virus. If you know you have that, I will tell you that when you do everything that I've taught you in both the menopause reset and fast like a girl, that is how I was able to overturn uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, was especially if you, if you look at the menopause reset, um, there are five health habits in here, plus I talk about how to get a good night's sleep. That was, this was really the door out of this chronic fatigue state. I just used these principles at 20 and I'm now recommending them for women over 40. But don't give up on yourself. I promise you, if you, if you ever think you're not getting energy, come, come, come back to one of my videos 
You'll see I've got a damn large amount of energy now, but not 30 years ago. I changed my lifestyle so I could get the energy that I wanted and you can too. So as always, I hope that helps. If you love that video and you want to dive into more of the information I have on this channel, go to this video. If you're trying to use fasting as a tool for weight loss, Congratulations, it literally is the best tool I have ever seen for weight loss. I think you should start with fasting before you change your food.